what do you make yeah. of preachers claiming that God drank tea with them, that God is bearded, as Prophet Isaiah McWells claimed, or physically seeing Jesus as Apostle Suleiman did? Can man physically see God? Well, again, uh, you know, the Bible tells us that God is spirit, like you said, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And then, of course, if God is spirit, then it means that God lives out of the immaterial world, even though he controls the material world. He lives in the immaterial and controls the material world. Now, so God drinking tea with somebody doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't, it doesn't even make Bible sense at all. If there was a God drinking tea anywhere, we will have seen it from the beginning of the scriptures, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. We will have seen God drinking tea with Moses, drinking tea with Adam, drinking tea with Abraham, drinking tea with Joshua, drinking tea even with Jesus when Jesus became a man, or drinking tea with the apostles. You know, Christ Christianity is historic and apostolic, which means what the apostles never did, and what the you know what Jesus never did, nobody can claim he God has done it with him because there's a laid down foundation. But brother Paul says, no other foundation can any man lay than that which is laid. The other day I had a preacher from somewhere saying he, he went to heaven and he drove a Range Rover. That is a laugh. This is a kind of abuse that is carried out on the scriptures when the scriptures are not rightly divided, which means Range Rover has started exporting cars to heaven. It means even God may be driving a Mercedes Benz or maybe a limousine or maybe a Bentley. That's a laugh. That's a real laugh. And that kind of joke can only, you know, can only be taken by people who don't know the scriptures. Brother Paul had a vision of heaven and the Bible says he was caught to the third heaven. And when he came back from that vision, he said what he saw, the human mouth cannot utter. That means when you really see into the heavens, when you really have a vision of the immaterial world, there is no vocabulary on earth that can accurately describe the glory and the beauty of the immaterial world. So when people come up with all those kind of things, you can quickly summarize that some of them just had maybe a malaria dream or maybe had a bad dream or maybe some childhood fantasy that played back in their subconscious mind. But when you look at the Holy Writ, the sound scriptures, you won't find any of such claims in the written word of God. And anything that is not consistent with the scriptures should be discarded and trashed away. Because the scripture remains a vital, valid authority of the revelation of God in the written book. Hello, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to the show. How are you guys doing? I hope everyone is fine. Please do us a favor by liking this video and also subscribe to the channel because that helps us a lot. I should ever be grateful to you. You know, um, the reason why I am talking about this like a lot is because I think that I have a responsibility um, to share my knowledge and wisdom when it comes to certain things happening in Africa. I personally believe that it is a responsibility and a duty for people to share their thoughts and opinion with other people, all in the hopes that we can all learn from each other. Now, like I've always said, I do not necessarily know everything, likewise you. And uh, the only way we can educate each other is by sharing our thoughts and opinion. You see, Christianity is one of the biggest religion in Africa. And a lot of people believe in this religion, you know, they, they practice it, they follow it, they do as their daddies and mommies have said or have told them to do. I used to be a very devoted Catholic Christian because my parents are all Catholic, right? So I used to be really devoted and uh, there are things these men of God will say that will really baffles you. There are things these people will say and you ask yourself that, why do they have to go this far? You know, why do they, why, why this far? Why all this? Can't they just preach salvation and then end it at that? Why all this scene of Jesus Christ uh, drinking tea and miracle money, this, that, that, this? Why all this? Why? They have convinced the people into giving them everything and they are not satisfied. It looks like they need to take it one notch ahead or one notch further. Why? Someone drank tea with, 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 with a lot. 
another person saw Jesus Christ. Another person prophesied how he went to heaven and saw cars in heaven. Come on. Why are you guys doing all these men of God? And for some reason, our devoted brothers and sisters would be like, Josh, not my man of God. And uh, he is a servant of the Lord. You can't say anything against him. Or he is a man of God. Whatever he says is the truth. Who told you that? Who told you that? You know, I have people in my family who will tell me that, please stay away from talking about men of God. I'm like, no, we cannot do that. Okay, we cannot do that. We cannot see this happening and we keep quiet. Do you know one thing I tell people? The reason why evil prevails in this world is because good people did nothing. That is the only reason. The only reason why we see evil spreading throughout the world is because good people thought that it wasn't necessary for them to speak out. You cannot see something like this happening and you kept quiet. If you really love thy neighbor as thyself, you will say something. You will say something. And it's better for you to say something and then people don't listen than for you to keep quiet and watch them go through what they are going through. Now, I have always said it. People are at liberty to do what they want to do. You can worship wherever you want to worship. You can believe in uh, uh, whatever daddy or mommy you want to believe in. That is your own choice. I have nothing to do with that. I have nothing against that. But I will tell you my opinion. I will tell you what I think. And then I will hope you listen carefully to what I say or what I think. And then you make your decision by yourself. I am not forcing you to take to what I am saying. No. You are at liberty to believe what you believe. You are at liberty to listen to whatever opinion that you want to listen to. But it's always advisable as a rational person to hear both sides of an argument or many sides of an argument before making your decision. So that's why I will not sit here and listen to people say, men of God say stuff like this and then do not say anything. Remember, knowledge is power and the information is the key to that knowledge. The men of God have been very successful in spreading their own sort of doctrine. And this has been as a result of people not challenging them. This has been as a result of people just listening to what they say and believing in what they say. Because the men of God have told us that they are the representative of God on earth. They have uh, elevated themselves to a certain level and they, that has made us subconsciously respected and adore them. We have never challenged them. We have never asked them that who gave them the authority to be servant of the Lord. Or why is it that when we challenge them, when we call out some of their wrongdoings, the Lord will punish us? Why? And why do they think that they can make the Lord their punisher? Why do they think that? What makes them believe that the Lord will punish anyone who will say anything that they do not like? What makes them think so? My brothers, my sisters, I am only saying this because I think that I have a platform and one of the responsibility of having a platform is to educate people. Not everyone is fortunate enough to have the knowledge and wisdom that, or that, that others do. Now, I am not the smartest person in the world. I'm not even close. But I just think that the men of God are taking their members for a ride. They are taking them for a fool. And in order for you to understand everything, do not look to your men of God, but rather look to God and read your Bible. Seek understanding of the Bible from the Lord. 
Be religious as, as, as much as you can. Read your Bible every day. Listen to your men of God, but be very, very smart with the way you listen to men of God. You must be very smart. Because at the end of the day, as an adult, you are responsible for everything. You cannot go blaming people. My man of God said so. He was the one that convinced me to do this or do that. You cannot say that. That would not suffice. You are responsible for everything you do. If you believe in a man of God in the wrong way, you are responsible for that. So please, I am not saying that Dr. Ebe Damina is the best religious person. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, read your Bible. Pray to your God. Ask your God for knowledge and wisdom and understanding to understand the Bible and to understand people and to understand your surroundings and to understand life as a whole. Pray for all that. And be smart to understand what is in the spiritual and what is in the physical. Be smart about that. Be smart to understand that in order for you to get anything, you have to work for it. Be smart to understand that the Lord, the Holy Spirit, will not do for you what you should have done for yourself. Be smart to understand all this. Please, okay, be smart. I think we've come to an era in our human, uh, uh, human society that there is this flow of information across the board. We have to awaken ourselves from the mental slumber that we have been going through. And Christians must be at the forefront of this. Christians must be able to separate the spiritual from the physical. Christians must be able to pinpoint those men of God who are taking them for a fool. Christians must be able to do the right things. But you guys out there, what is your take on Dr. Ebe Damina's statements on people who say they drank tea with the Lord or who say they saw Jesus or those who say uh, if they are servant of the Lord, miracle money will appear in your wallet now. What is the take about it? And uh, one more thing. Do you really think, do you honestly believe that men of God are teaching the right doctrine to their members. Share your thought and opinion with us in the comment section below. Because like always, we love hearing what you have to say. And also, do not forget to like this video, share this video, follow our Facebook page, and most importantly, subscribe to this channel because that helps us a lot. And we shall forever be grateful to you.